Look at those spurs on that bird there. Look at the paint on him. He had a tail. Feel that little tenderloin right in there, right? So very now look at this. Beautiful. We got some fantastic browning action on here. Give her a whirl and see what you think. Okay. This all started at the Portland Sportsman Show. I Steve Waller and we were talking with the guys at the Big K and we said, let's do a pheasant hunt. And I thought, who should I bring on this trip? And thought of my Uncle Jack who lives over on the coast drove up in his 1942 Ford Business Coupe. This was a car that was assembled October 11th, 1941. It's really a pre-World War I Ford. One of the last Fords they made uh, until 1946 when the World War II was over. It was bring along some of these old shotguns that might not have been out in for a long time either. Old shotguns. And these guys haven't birds on the wing so long we sent shotgun range. Anybody else need one? Now, how long do you let them lay there before you shoot at them? <laughs> <laughs> when he was young he held up for Knott's Berry Farm and on TV shows and movies as a stunt double and, and doubled for John Wayne in several movies. In the single action shooting society, cowboy action, I knew that a good shooter to bring along on this trip. Oval, he's from Ashland. He's the inventor of the work sharp knife sharpening system, which I've used for quite a while now. And so we wanted to get him into the field. Found out that he hadn't hunted birds uh, for over 20 years and, and uh, not behind pointing dogs either. And so this really was <laughs> a great time to get all these guys back out into the field with these old guns. This is a licensed preserve, the Big K, and they offer bird hunting down along the river. We're on the banks of the Umpqua River in what they call the Fertile Crescent. It's been farmed here since people were finding gold in these, in these mountains. After a little bit of playing around, it, they figured out what guns were gonna fit them, and we headed out into the field. Oh yeah, you brought an old Lefevre too, it looks like, or at least made made in the same plant. Yeah, in Ithaca. Mm -hmm. Ithaca, New York. All right. This is that lucky gun right here, right? And what is this here? A Remington? That is a Remington, Remington. That, uh, made at the turn of the century. It's a Remington um, Remington trap gun made around the turn of the century. Model eighteen ninety. Okay, well let's make sure we've got some cartridges, some shells. And this is a Model Carry. 12 Winchester. Good, and what, when made did you... In 18, made in, in 1923. Perfect. So I've known Keith about as long as I've known you. I think she was just a puppy when I met you. Yeah, yeah, I got her, actually got her out of Idaho and, and uh, was my second, my second poodle pointer. She's a longer haired dog. This is about as long as you're going to see. I actually will clip her here next week. I haven't started guiding out here. This is my first kind of guided deal here today. So we'll take her down to about a half inch and that hair will grow back. Um, I've got a male in the truck we can take, maybe take a look at later. Um, got him from Czechoslovakia, import dog, and, and we're gonna get more import dogs. They're a kind of a unique dog. They're well, a versatile know, dog. Points well, does the water well, not as good as a really good lab, but does it well. They'll run rabbits and fox and whatnot over in Germany and, and that kind of thing. But uh, a neat dog, a standard poodle when they started them and an English pointer. So you get the brains out of the poodle and the drive out of that, out of that big run pointer dog. Excellent, well, I'm glad to be in the field with Keeper again, that's for sure. These birds here are a mixture of pen raised birds and wild birds. And we're not sure what we're gonna find. We're gonna go out into the field. We do have some carryover birds. I've seen some earlier in the year, um, but excellent. These bugs, these chicks, they, they need bugs bad. Yeah. Protein. Yeah, you start losing, you lose the bug, the bugs, and, and you'll see the chicks even in eastern Oregon will go away, and that's a big part of it is, is they've got to have that, the bugs right after the Yeah, I ate chocolate covered grasshoppers one time. I probably won't do that anymore, but no, no. You get hungry enough, I guess you eat anything. Yeah, well, it's chocolate. Yeah, yeah. We're walking <laughs> in a line. We're watching the dog in front of us, and we're putting Jerry 
and we're putting Dan up first. What we want to do is we want to get downwind and then just watch her and then follow the dog's nose. It's all about trusting the dog. Right here. Right here, this way. Okay, so move on fast, guys. And up comes the bird. We're all watching it lift up out of the oats and up out of the grass, and, and there's our shot. What was interesting, didn't really plan it this way, none of these guys had hunted birds like two decades. My Uncle Jack hadn't hunted birds uh, since He'd hunted with my dad before I was born, and, and uh, Jerry hadn't hunted birds since 1955. Nice shot. Here. These guys, they've been doing this their lives, yeah. but we've got to kind of train them up and, and get them pointed in the right direction. And it's all about fields of fire and making sure nice that when the bird comes up that that first we know where everybody else is and then whose shot it's going to be. Right there. Good job guys. Nice work. There it is. She's got it. Good girl. Steve went back and got uh, another dog. It's a two-year-old named Captain, and it's really dry this morning, and so we're just going to get some more smelling power out on the project. From one point to the next, with a keeper just solid, this is one of the better bird dogs I've hunted with over the years, and for some reason, we are shooting as well as anybody could shoot. Go ahead and pull right in on it. Mm -hmm. There we go. That's yours. Helicopter. Nice shot. We're halfway through the hunt, and we've been shooting well. Mm -hmm. Nothing's gone wrong, and Jerry doesn't have his gun loaded when there's all of a sudden there's a bird in the air and he palms around, drops it into the chamber and drops the bird before it could get out of range. And it's testament to the thousands of rounds he shoots every year. Well, when the, when the dog <laughs> went on point, I eased the action because I didn't have the action close, so I eased the action shut. Yeah. It didn't go into battery. So when the pheasant took off, the gun wouldn't fire, so I jacked the shell out, and, and so I, had to, I didn't have another one in it, so I grabbed one out of my belt and put it in and shot him with it. Well, you are a single action shooting society, long time shooter, and, uh, 20 years, yeah. and if it's gonna pay off in the field. And that's what we have to do, single <laughs> loads. So it paid off here, I grabbed it with my right hand, threw it in, shot him. Yeah, you were just on autopilot at that point, and the bird wasn't very far either. Oop, right there. Okay, Dan, right here. That's yours, Dan. That's you. Yeah, there it is. That was a nice shot, Dan. That is gorgeous. That is nice. For Dan Doval, it had been 21 yeah, years yeah. since he had hunted birds. And now he's back in the field shooting very well using that old shotgun just like uh, in, the, in the 1940s. There we go, there we go. Look at the spurs on that bird there. I mean, that's an old bird right there. Okay, 
it jacked. Move up. Oh yeah, I see it moving there. Okay, I'm gonna walk up in, walk in. There we go, there we go. I looked over and Kristen was on point and then I looked over where Keeper was on point. And so we split up, Jack and Jerry went one way. Dan and I uh, went to the other dog. Then all of a sudden there was a bird in the air and shots and then another bird is up and going away. I noticed Captain is is honor and backing up to keepers points and vice versa yeah and he, he's a young dog so that was pretty neat there because he pretty much honored he finally he finally stepped in but you know there'll be a day here in the near future where he'll he'll stand there and and uh, she'll go ahead and place that bird or yeah i will yeah so um, they call that honoring the other dog which is kind of neat yeah that's that's what you're training pays off in yeah a lot of training time and getting these dogs to that point you know yeah you'll sell one of these dogs for six or eight thousand dollars but trust me you never get your training out of them just just takes time so yeah the dogs they uh they give you the edge i mean we couldn't do this without them well there'd be no reason for them i don't think you could find the birds without the dogs you wouldn't know where to look and there'd be no reason for them to fly that one either it flew out from between your feet or you'd stepped That's over the top of it when it went behind you Turned around and the dog was looking back that way and and uh, off that bird was going. That was cool. Yeah. We caught them coming at us, going away from us and flying away and flying backwards. It didn't work for any of them, did it? Didn't it didn't work for any of them. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the spurs on that bird there. I mean, that's an old bird right there. He's got a nice long tail, but uh, he's a little bit bigger than some of the other roosters. But those spurs, that's what really tells you how old he is. Dan, how long has it been since you hunted pheasants? It's been about uh, 20 years, 25 years maybe since I moved to Oregon. You're hunting with a side by side today, but uh, it's one that we brought for you. But I've hunted with a side by side all my life. Yeah. I can't figure out one barrel. Well, I don't know, but when I was a kid back home, we always called these China pheasants. That's uh, there's China pheasants and China hens, and that's the term that we always used for them. Well, these birds came from China in the 1880s, and they were brought over on ships, of course, and then the very first place they were introduced was in the Willamette Valley. Oh, really? And it wasn't too long before they were in the Umpqua Valley, which is where we're hunting them right now. I think the question is, is how's all four of us going to get in this old business coop? Well, it ain't going to be pretty. Shotgun! <laughs> well, y'all bring your pocket knives. Yes, sir. I did. We got some work to do. After lunch, Dan tuned up some blades for us, and he's really a tool expert, is what he is. That's what he brings to Derek's, the company he works for. They created the WorkSharp line for him for the products that he invents, and this is his life. I mean, it's his love. You can see that he knows yeah, this. Also that when other people want to read to he wants to sharpen a knife it. and and so he's built this whole product line to do the kind of work on a blade that you can tune to a job we have a plumage on him we have a tail feel that little tender line right in there right so gary now look at this beautiful we got some fantastic browning action on here give her a whirl and see what you think Have for me today. Only the best for you. We talked about uh, a little bird hunting. Oh and my God! Look at those; they're beautiful. I brought you some fresh today. Very fresh pheasant. Very beautiful. And where did you find these at, Gary? We were hunting on the Big K in Southern Oregon. Let's go ahead and get right into this beautiful, beautiful bird. Him, look at the tails. And you pointed this out earlier. That how old is he? About. About a year? This is a, this is a year old bird. Yeah, mm -hmm. and you can tell by the, the spurs, the, the spurs over here. The spurs. Yeah, now he uses those for protection and for fighting. Fighting, yeah. and yeah. I see you have a cleaned one here. Yeah. Either that or it was a really good shot. All done one shot, right? We're no. good at this now. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, what we're going to do is we're going to actually just take the breast down off of this okay. one. So, let's go ahead and make this easy on ourselves. And we're going to go ahead and just rip him 
apart just like that. So you have these two pieces. So there's a couple different ways we can do this. We're gonna go ahead and just feel that breastbone. Yeah. We're gonna come right down the center of it, just like we would do a chicken at home, okay? Mm -hmm. No different. And you feel that little tenderloin right in there, oh, right? Absolutely, yeah. And you want that to come along with it because you know if you've got that, then you know you're doing a good job because you're right along the breastbone. And voila, you have a very nice little breast. What's gonna be fun about this is we have these wild ramps mm -hmm. or wild leeks, spring onions, whatever you like to call them. And they have a nice garlicky, kind of an onion flavor going on. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and just put these guys right in there, oh. okay? okay? If we were doing this at home, we had a little more time, you'd wanna put these in a brine and it's a great way to do any of your game birds or, or, or game animals, period. And you know, so maybe basically a cup of salt to a gallon of water, maybe a half cup of brown sugar, whatever you like. Mm -hmm. And of course, that's gonna kinda get rid of some of the gaminess, it's gonna make it tender. We have a little bit of the wild leek in there and we're gonna do a little salt and pepper, very, very simple. And once again, that wild leek has a great onion and garlic flavor. And we're just gonna go ahead and kinda just make a little, little sandwich out of them here. Just wrap them up just like that. Okay. Now, here we're gonna use a little prosciutto. Because the prosciutto has a great saltiness, it has some wonderful flavors in it, and of course it still has the fat. Mm -hmm. So we're just gonna do this, make a nice little wrap, just like that. Now, a lot of people stop here and they throw it in the pan. Mm -hmm. And it's a little bit difficult. So we're gonna do a little butcher's tie on this guy. Start right at the top. And we're just gonna make a nice, simple, little overhand knot. It's a slip knot, if you will. Yeah. See, come back around, slide underneath. Oh, yeah. See, just like that. Just like if we're wrapping a sardine for a sturgeon bait. Yeah. I, I knew I liked you. Yeah, yeah <laughs> absolutely. And there you have it. And we are ready to take it over to the saute pan. Yeah, okay. All right, Gary, so now we have this beautiful pheasant breast all wrapped up in the prosciutto and ready to go. He's all nestled and snug. And, and we are going to go ahead and put him into a medium-high heat pan, and we're going to pan sear him, okay? Okay. Now, we don't want it too hot because we want the heat to penetrate the interior mm -hmm. without burning the exterior. Mm -hmm. So we want to have that medium-low heat going on. And we want a nice little char on the prosciutto mm -hmm. because it gives a really nice flavor profile and a little bit of complexity. So Gary, now look at this, it's beautiful. We got some fantastic browning action on here. Yeah. Look at that, and you can smell that prosciutto. Yep. The spices of the prosciutto coming off, a little bit of saltiness, a little pepper, a little sweet spices going on. And you know that heat's starting to permeate the inside. And I'm gonna have Suzanne put it in the oven. Okay. And we are gonna go ahead and put it in the oven at probably about four and a quarter for just say about maybe eight to 12 minutes, mm -hmm. and then we're gonna temp it and see where it's at. Now what we're gonna do is make a pan sauce. Yeah, we're gonna make a pan sauce. Okay. And once again, we're gonna use these wild leeks or ramps. I'm really, really big into just complimenting and enhancing flavors, not overpowering. Yeah. And then a little bit of ginger. I love pink peppercorns. They have a fantastic floral flavor, and of course, a little bit of a pepper flavor. And these are gonna go right in there also. And we're just gonna let these kinda, oh, just permeate the oil that's already in there naturally from the pheasant and the prosciutto. And you can smell that, Gary. Oh, you can, yes, you can, can smell those oh, incredible yes. flavors. You can kinda, yeah. that pink peppercorn starting to come out, mm -hmm. and that ginger. We have some local huckleberries. Okay, we're gonna give these just a little bit of a flip. Smell that, that foresty mm -hmm. kinda thing happening yep. now with that huckleberry and that earthy kind of mm -hmm. a little citric, little tannin thing going on. Now, we need to just kind of bring this up, and we need to bring, when I mean bring it up, we need to bring our flavors up a little bit. We need to kick it up. I have a little bit of white balsamic, and that's gonna brighten everything up. Now, I'm gonna let that just kind of go, and you can see how it's starting to already kind of come down a little bit. It's trying to re reduce, kind of thickening just a touch. Now, from here, we're gonna go ahead and add a little bit of Madeira, or Marsala, or Sherry, whichever you like. Ah, a couple times around. Oh yeah, that's beautiful. Now to finish it off yeah. and bring it all together, we're gonna get the richness of our honey. Oh. And this is a really rich, fantastic local honey. Let's again, give her a swirl. Now you see how that all came together? Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna say it's just gonna need a little pinch of salt. Of course. Just a touch. And now this is a traditional pan sauce. So we're gonna finish it off with butter.
And see how that's starting to come together? Mm -hmm. See how that, there's no more separation. And there it is. Absolutely glistening, beautiful sauce. You've got some fantastic flavors that's going with that, that mm -hmm. pheasant. A little bit of tart, a little bit of sweet, a little bit of earthy. Nice browning on it. Beautiful. Thank you very much, Suzanne. That's fantastic. Fantastic. And one more cut. Can you smell that uh, wild leek in there? Yes. The ramp, that onion and the garlic. I think it'll look really pretty on the white plate. Oh yeah. Rich in color. And you see, it is not dried out. There's still yeah. just a, a hint, a hint of pink in there. Mm -hmm. So to me, that's saying there's really, really good moisture. Give her a whirl and see what you think. Okay. Yeah? I see a look on your face. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Good? Yes, that is excellent. Good? Yes, that is excellent. Tell me, what are you, what are you getting out of this? getting a little bit of a flavor of the uh, pumpkin mm -hmm. We only have two forks. Bummer. <laughs> <laughs> but so, the prosciutto. Yeah. You know, you can put bacon on something and that's mm -hmm. nice, but mm -hmm. it's abundant. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And complements everything that we've done here.